Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Okay, okay, okay. You already know what time it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Funny Feelings. It is time to get episode six kicked off. Let's get going. In the last episode, we streaked hard. In just under two weeks, we managed to get Spindle, Ardeo, and Scorpia, which finished off the entire Wilderness pet set. On top of that, we've obtained some major quality of life items to speed up our master clues, and we finally got our POH maxed out and fully optimized. I don't want to wait any longer, so let's get started because we have a lot of content coming up. Yo, what is up? We just got Scorpio Pet a couple hours ago and I did not have a game plan cooked up. So we're back to our comfortable corrupted gauntlet. I'm currently using this content as a place to go whenever I don't want to fully commit to an activity and it's actually working out well. Slowly chipping away at the KC, we're up to 120 now. KC number of 124 coming right up. Oh, all right. That is going to be our fourth one of these so far. Nice. These aren't worth that much anymore. I think they're around three to four mil, but hey, of course we'll take it. All right, hold up. Before we go any further, just look at that cash stack, man. Oh, I can get used to that. Oh, Wildy Pets really paid off. Some of this, of course, is from BA2, but in total, we've made around 700 mil from hunting all the Wildy Pets. Just finished up a few rounds of BA, and this will push us to over 300 gamble count. Of course, we're still hunting this pet, and honestly, I'm having a blast in this minigame so far. And another torso completed. Thank you for the 18 mil, my friend. Coming on up, we have three healer gambles. There's number 305, 306, 307. No pet today. We'll save it for another time. Back at the big red dog. And I realized I've not talked yet about one of the best parts about CG, the elite clues. At a one in 25 rate, they come in relatively often. Consistent GP and good elite clue chance. Man, that's a boss I'm always gonna enjoy. KC 126. Hey, and would you look at that? Sometimes all you gotta do is ask, and let me tell you, Jagex just gives. Since I have 40 totems stacked up, I've been doing Skatizo kills for free hard and elite clues whenever I have both of them available to obtain. Skatizo has a 100% chance to drop hard clues and a 1 in 5 chance for elites, so definitely make sure not to waste any clue rolls when killing them. Okay, okay, okay. We got a plan of action. It's Thursday morning right now, and over the next two days, I'm going to do a mix of CG, BA, and Master Clues all day to try to make as much money as possible before I switch up the content and start a new goal. Now, I'm not going to spoil it yet, but let's just say this weekend we are in for, in my opinion, well, some of the best PVM content in the game with some of the most intricate alt methods that I personally have been dying to try out. There's a nice base 150 CG KC, and I am absolutely loving it. I definitely need to work on my consistency in Hunliff and speeding up my preps a bit more. But other than that, we're gaming. Okay, nice. Finally, we've been close to 30 without seeing an elite. Drop rate once again is 1 in 25, so a little bit dry. Always a great thing to see. Got two elites this morning from BA Gambles, so off the master clues we go. Quick, fast, efficient, three caskets. Let's send them. 134. 135 and 136 with a call log slot to finish it off. Nice 180 KC coming on in. For anyone wondering and trying to be efficient with PVM, there's a plugin in Runelite called Bossing Info and it'll display your kills per hour. EHB stands for Efficient Hours Bossed and at Corrupted Gauntlet it's set for 7 per hour. So if you're averaging around that rate, you're doing pretty good. This is going to conclude our two days of CG, finishing off strong with 189 KC. Now, before I hit the sheets tonight, I am getting the itch for BA, so let's go send a torso real quick. <laughs> oh, look at this new BA method that we use when a customer is on the healer roll. The big brains over the BA department have found a way to maximize healer points by force damaging themselves with divine pots and me being the healer, violing them. This allows us to get 375 healer points in just the first five waves of BA, as opposed to doing all 10 waves in the past for the same amount of points. Man, saving time in a speedrun? I mean, that's a no-brainer. Another torso done. A premium one at that. Oh, it 1,200 mil passed. Sheesh. All right, three gambas quick. Here we go. 
323, 324, and 325 high gamble KC. Cool. That's the final casket dug up. Three caskets coming on in. Here we go. Dink. Oh, okay. Well, mimic time it is. That is the mimic slain. And that is number 10 for us. Okay, so for real this time, three caskets, here we go. KC 137, 138, and 139. Okay, two god pages and two call log slots, okay. Over the last two days, we've done roughly 50 CG KC and 25 high gambles, and we have made quite a bit of money in the process. I'm gonna start liquefying my bank of useless items in order to start making my first big purchases. First up, we gotta sell off our Torva helmet and Bofa. This is gonna give me enough cash to buy Torva chest, legs, Venator bow, Xerite van versus Fang, and a scythe with the previous GP I had. These upgrades are gonna be pivotal for efficient PVM and will be used in many pet hunts down the line. Since completing the Wilderness Pet Set, I've been in sort of a limbo, hopping around content with no real pet grind that I was committing myself to. Well, that's all gonna change today. I've been putting this off to the point where I have enough capital to afford max gear, and I think we're at that stage. Ladies and gentlemen, let the Slayer Pet Hunts officially begin. Grotesque Guardians reside on the second floor of the Mortania Slayer Tower. A Slayer Ring teleport will be your quickest means of transportation. To efficiently hunt this pet, you'll want a setup similar to these. You'll want to be on Arceus Spellbook and utilizing Mage Thrall and Death Charge whenever they're off cooldown. Auto Smasher is also highly recommended for this pet hunt. At the beginning of the fight, ring the bell and blowpipe run yourself to Dawn's southeasternmost tile. Begin using Venator Bow when Dusk walks on top of Dawn, allowing for double hit to occur. When Dawn flies off, switch to melee and sight Dusk three times before his stun attack. Step away from the boss and avoid the falling rocks. Continue attacking until he flies away. This is the halfway point in the fight. Both Dusk and Dawn will be invulnerable and spawn yellow and purple dangerous tiles in the ground. Be at least two tiles away from them to avoid all damage. Begin by blowpiping Dawn three times as you path to its southeasternmost tile before switching to the Venator Bow. As the healing orbs come out, ignore them and continue DPSing the boss as your chance of skipping their mechanic is over 95%, assuming best in slot gear. Once Dawn dies, Dusk will push you away and form a cage around you that will damage tiles inside. To avoid all damage, path out of the inner circle and make your way back towards Dusk. In rare instances, the cage opening will be against the arena wall. Simply stand on the open tile and wait for the attack to pass. On the final phase of the fight, pray range and scythe Dusk. Dusk has a 1 in 6 chance to switch attack styles if not praying correctly, and a 1 in 3 chance to switch attack styles if praying correctly. This means by switching prayer to match his last attack, you'll have the correct overhead prayer on for 72% of his attacks. This phase deals the most damage, so make sure to utilize claw specs to end the kill quickly. At max efficiency, Grotesque Guardians comes out to be 37 kills per hour with a 1 in 3000 drop rate. I hope you're ready for the grind because this gives an average of 81 hours to hit the pet drop rate, making it the second longest Slayer pet to obtain. Good luck out there in the stone prison and don't forget to bring your rock hammer. Oh, good morning. I am once again embarrassed to say that it is 6 a.m. and I could not sleep last night due to the excitement for today. Grotesque Guardians will be our first legit Slayer boss task on this account, and with the recent introduction of Venator Bow and Masori, kills have gotten way quicker and more consistent since the last time I was here. We got a lot of kills to do today, so let's get at it. First KC coming on in, and... Oh, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, combat achievements. <laughs> That's right. Combat achievements are a thing now. Well, this is actually a good thing because I still need elite combat achievements for the 5% extra master clues around the game. Nice first kill, but I also did forget to change my spellbook to Arceus. It's early in the morning. Listen, don't blame me. I've not had my coffee yet, so I'll be right back. And this kill is going to mark 100 KC. And, okay, nice. We get the Grandmaster speed time with it as well. Cool. I'm pretty sure the time to beat is 120, so literally no room to spare on that. I know I'm only 100 KC in, but the method is already pretty comfy, and I'm using a resupply alt outside, so I don't ever have to spend time running to and from the bank. 
I'll be paying for the supplies with the minimal loot I pick up, which I think is definitely worth for the extra couple of kills per hour it gets me. Man, let me tell you something weird about me. My favorite time during a pet hunt is after I finish the whole collection log, minus the pet, so that I never get baited by pop-ups anymore. I'm pretty sure these gloves aren't worth much, but hey, it's a call log slot nevertheless. Hey, nice. This is going to be the first of many Slayer levels we will obtain strictly through pet hunts. 20kc left on this task. This will be finished up pretty quick. Alrighty, that concludes the first Grotesque Guardian task completed, and we have many, many more to come. Let's pick up some of this loot and figure out what's next. Wait, 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 wait. One of the chores I wanted to do during Music Cape and Kandoran Headgear 4 that I just now realized I forgot about was 80 Prayer. The non-fortified version of the Eldenis Ward is a mage offhand that gives 3% mage damage bonus and is insanely cheap. Now that we're back at Slayer, we'll be doing Barrage Tasks again, and this is an upgrade I absolutely want. With almost 2 mil XP per hour, these levels flew by. And, okay, well, they were flying by until the PKers showed up. <laughs> okay, perfect timing. We're done here now, I guess. We didn't get any prayer. Let's get out of the wilderness. Here we are supposed to be grinding out Slayer, and all I can think about is BA. Yesterday, after my Grotesque Guardians task ended, I got an itch and somehow ended up doing 6 hours of BA. So... Let's, let's think about the positives. We have a ton of points stacked up, and we have three caskets ready. I'm going to open these high gambles first, though, see if we maybe get another passive elite. Once again, elite clues are our 1 in 15 from BA, and right now we have 18 high gambles stacked up, so we should expect one. Hey, let's go. Nice. 13 gambles in, we get our elite. Let's go store this in Watson. Well, after those master caskets, we have our elite clue slots open again, so I might as well send some more Scatizo. Hey, yo, nice. Cool, elite clue. I mean, that's basically the best thing you can get from here other than pet. With a one in five chance, we hit it. Hell yeah. And the final Scatizo that we can kill for this session of clues. <gasps> oh, okay, that's not the pet, but what? Oh my gosh, 20 case, 27 KC Jar of Darkness. Uh, I think this thing is really rare, definitely rarer than the pet. Wow, okay, well, I hope no call loggers are mad at me. Okay, wow, we're finally getting back to finishing off these stacked high gambles after three master clues and three Skatizo kills. Who knows, maybe we get more elites and we just do masters all day, I won't complain. Dang, no more elites and no pet, but 347 high gambles, and we've already passed a third of the pet rate for this amazing piece of content. You know, I don't think we ever went and got another task after our first Grotesque Guardians task, so Duradel, what do you have in store for me today? Ooh, okay, a Jad task, okay. The Fight Caves is one of two pets we will be obtaining in the Tazar region. This pet method segment isn't going to explain how to kill Jad, rather how to make your waves quicker. You'll want to set up similar to these. Being on the Arceus spellbook is the most beneficial, as thralls provide the most value while inside the caves. For this pet hunt, your biggest time save is going to be the Fight Caves spawn predictor from Runelight's plugin hub. In the settings, find Wave Display Mode and set it to Next. This will highlight tiles that NPCs will spawn in on for the next wave, allowing you to position yourself correctly at the end of each wave. You'll want to start each wave near the highest HP monster, allowing time for other NPCs to make their way into your attacking distance. Splitting the distance between NPCs is something that will greatly speed up runs, and this is done by either pulling or kiting monsters in the direction of other NPCs spawned in different areas of the room. Did you know that when an NPC is moving as it dies, its death animation is actually two ticks slower? This will occur mostly with blobs, bats, and meleeers, which can be avoided by standing within melee distance as they die. That might not sound like much, but two ticks over the span of, let's say 60 waves, save 72 seconds a run. This is going to add up on your way to the pet. While on this subject, thralls not only function as a DPS source, but they can actually speed up the death animation. 
so make sure you're always resummoning them, whether they've expired or whether they'll be out of attacking range of a monster for an extended period of time. Utilize your claw specs on the meleeers and majors as often as possible. For experienced players looking to go even faster, Scythe will save you one tick on projectile time, and having multiple hit splats at the end of a kill will speed up the death animation by another tick, saving you another two ticks on a death of any NPC that is 2x2 two two or larger. That's another 72 seconds eliminated. Chins can also be utilized throughout the fight caves. Popping a blob early can lead to the mini blobs being positioned one tile away from the southwesternmost tile of a bigger NPC, giving maximum DPS potential to Chins by hitting all three targets. With max gear and these tips, you can expect to start averaging sub 25 minute runs. With a drop rate of 1 in 100 from the Jad kill on task, plus the 1 in 200 cape gamble, your combined odds for receiving pet is 1 in 67, making this roughly 28 hours to hit the pet drop rate. Remember, stand up is mage, slam ground is range, Good luck out there, and don't get shaky hands. Oh my gosh, the three caskets that I banked earlier, I never opened. So let's send them now before this fire cape. 140, 141, yo, 141, a four mil casket with the uh, cult ornament kit, nice. And 142. All right, never pet. That is Casey number five. No way. No, 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 no. Dude, dude, what the, what the fuck? What, dude, what? Five KC on my fourth gamble. What is this account, bro? This account is spooning. It is spooning so hard. Everywhere I'm going, I'm just getting insanely lucky. <laughs> Jad pet marks number nine for us. Nine already. With a rate of one in 67 on task, plus the cape gambles, it's safe to say that we once again got insanely lucky. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start getting used to this feeling because it's happening with every pet. I was never able to practice fully max efficient fire caves, but honestly, I enjoyed the content for the short while that it lasted. Man, what a crazy and unexpected start to the Slayer pet hunt. All right, welcome back. We are sitting on a lovely Necreal task right now, which is actually really good because this is going to be progress towards the Skatizo pet. We just hit 94 magic, which means we never have to bring an imbued heart again to boost for Ice Barrage, which, yeah, that's pretty cool. Back in the stone prison and we just hit 200 KC. Well, you know, I probably shouldn't actually even call it a prison because I'm quite enjoying myself right now. Anyways, first 200 KC flown by and the kills per hour sitting at Roughly 35 over the last two hours, which actually isn't awful. Another task done. Duradel, you better treat me nice. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Abyssal Demons. Okay, this means Sire, and I actually have a gear for it now. Oh, boy. Do I have a treat for you guys? This Sire method is one that's been known for a couple years now, but I've never been able to attempt it, and it's actually quite hard after talking to some pretty good altars. Good luck to me, because I think I'm going to need it. The amount of stress I'm feeling right now is insurmountable. What the f***? This method is a two-world sire method with an alt that's also on Abyssal Demon Task. It kills the vents to spawn sire while I'm finishing up on the previous world. Doing this properly, I should be cycling between both the worlds simultaneously while finishing up the kill on my main and spawning out the new sire on my alt. Now there's a lot going on, which is why this is so stressful, but like most other things in RuneScape, it's something that's just going to take me some time to get used to it. Oh my gosh, Lord help me, please. Oh no. I am just so dead. I am so dead. I hate this method. I hate this boss. Dude, how am I supposed to keep up with this? My brain cannot do this many... Eh, okay, well. <sighs> There's the first death. I think we're only still 3 KC in, and every KC so far, I felt like I have been fighting for my life. All right, we've got this method worked out a bit more now. We just hit 50 KC and 99 hit points coming on in. Our first 99 on this account. Back to Sire though, we've ditched the Scythe and we picked up Fang, as Scythe is only minimally better after having hit a Dragon Warhammer spec. With how good Claw specs are on Final Phase, I don't realistically see Scythe DPS beating out Fang and Claws, so I'm going to stick with this setup as I found really good use in it. 
74 KC. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, nice. All right, our first unsired. Unsired dropper is one in 100. We got it on 74 KC. Kills per hour is actually looking pretty good. Once again, we're only an hour and a half in right now. We have a lot to learn about this method, and we're almost already averaging 50 kills per hour, which is sweet. That is only gonna go up with time as we get more comfortable with this method. Let's go turn this unsired in, see what we get. And for the first unsired on this account, good luck. <laughs> oh, a jar. All right. Jar is the second rarest thing that you can get apart from the pet. Um, I'm definitely surprised to see the jar is the first one, but we'll take it. Underrated on the first unsired. I'm not going to be complaining about that. This is going to mark 100 KC for us. I just got back from resupplying and taking a short mental break. And oh, let me tell you, learning this method took a lot of brain power because my head was pounding after the first 30 minutes trying to keep track of everything. Two World Sire is definitely not something to take lightly, but now that I've gotten the basics down, I'm starting to feel kind of addicted to this method. You know, I'd be okay if I get another Sire task right after. And task is almost over. KC 126. Yo, another unsired. Wow, okay. We are getting blessed. Two unsireds in our first task. Our first task is actually about to end here soon. I do not have Abbey Demons extended. Second unsired though, let's go turn this thing in. Good luck us. Abyssal head. You know what? We're getting the call log slots out of the way early. Okay, I'll take it. No bludgeon piece, but we do have a jar and an abyssal head. Let's go. Okay, wow. I feel so much better now. It might have taken an hour and potentially a death or two to learn, but this method is actually insane. This is the last kill of the task, but over the last one and a half hours, we've been averaging 48 kills per hour, and I'm still making a ton of mistakes. Once I really get comfortable with this method, I can see myself honestly averaging in the mid 50s for kills per hour, which is almost double the speed I've been used to in the past. There won't be a pet method segment for Sire on this video, but I'll tell you what, you take a second to pause the video and hit that subscribe button, and I promise you'll be seeing it really soon. We're back at our good friends Dawn and Dusk and peep that kills per hour. Now that I've done two tasks, this is actually my third task of Grotesque Guardians, it's time to really start trying to be efficient throughout the kill. We're averaging 37 kills per hour right now, which is the EHB rate set for this boss, and we don't even have max stats yet. Sheesh! Two big milestones flying in quick. 98 range and 2000 total look at that in the chat box that looks beautiful now we have access to every world in runescape not that i'll use 2k total worlds but it's kind of cool not to be limited the range xp per hour here is not too bad it's decent so expect me to finish off 99 here in the next few tasks three master caskets coming up here we go kc 143 144 and 145 oh wow look at all those dragon items okay Grotesque Guardians have an elite clue drop rate of 1 in 230. Pretty weird number, but you know, Jagex likes to set random rates for things. We managed to pull two during our last task, which is sweet. Listen, please don't call me crazy, but I'm actually enjoying Grotesque Guardians, especially when trying to go fast and stay efficient. We just hit 400 KC and we're up to 37.5 kills per hour right now. These kills are literally flying by. Masori and Venator Bow are actually such good upgrades too. It's insane. If I had to guess a random number, I would probably say I'm only failing heal orb skip one out of every 50 kills, which is amazing compared to what it used to be with old Armadillo and Blowpipe. I'm feeling like doing Master Clues today, and we have a hardened elite slot open, so let's send a Skatizo. This is going to be KC number 30. And yes, sir. Okay, cool. We hit the 1 in 5 rate for elite again. Nice. Don't make fun of me but last night i was glued to finishing up queen's gambit but i also wanted to play runescape on the side so we collected for two torsos and we have seven gambles stacked up good luck us let's see what we get yes that is what we like to see elite clue on 377 gamble count off the watson we go that was actually our third elite stacked, which means three master caskets finished up. Let's get these going. 146 KC, 147 KC, and 148 KC. Wow. Okay. All very below average, but that's master clues in a nutshell.
500 grotesque guardian kc as a quick reminder this pet drop rate is a one in 3k so we've passed one six of the drop rate already which is kind of nuts this kc is really going by fast a 90 slayer look at that beaut also i just want to point out we are now 90 slayer gone from 87 to 90 without a single kraken task hopefully they start coming in soon because i definitely thought i'd have some nice relaxing kraken content in my life by now yes sir we are getting stronger 97 strength and 117 combat man look at those stats our account is starting to look good No way. No, 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 no. Just, just, dude, stop, stop, stop. Stop the f right now. Stop. No. No. We're spooning every pet, dude. We're literally just spooning. I can't stop spooning every fucking pet. I am honestly in just such disbelief. Oh my gosh. Man, there's an extra layer of luck involved in this too because this is one of the slowest Slayer pets to obtain. 40 days, 21 hours played on the account, and we're up to 10 pets now. Officially in the double digits, wow. We've done almost 400 high gambles as a healer rank, so I think it's time to try out for a new role, you know? Freshen it up a little bit. On my main account, Malfoy, the first role I passed was attacker, but that was almost four years ago, and I finally have gear and stats on this new account, so you know what? Let's send it. I know I'm gonna be insanely rusty, but I'm hoping it comes back to me quick, Good luck me, because I am absolutely going to need it. Oh boy. Yeah, that trial was something. Rusty is an absolute understatement. Definitely not the worst showing in the world, but absolutely not something I'm proud of. I actually have no idea if this is a pass or fail, so I guess let's see together. All right, feedback time. Here we go. This is where the nerves really kick in. Not that bad, but also not great. Was right in the middle for someone who hasn't attacked in years. <laughs> oh, gosh. Could give you P. Let's assume you'd improve quick. Yo, nice. Okay, for anyone who does not understand or does not know, P list is basically the in between of passing and failing. P list stands for practice list. It, it basically means that you can run leeches and you can run with the FC, but you're gonna have to retrial again in a couple weeks. Nice. We will take that because I absolutely thought I was full failing that trial. All right, we are back on Coxie. I did that trial on Malfoy, my main account, so that I didn't waste any time logged into the game on the speedrun account. All I can think about right now is attacking in BA, so I'm gonna be honest, I've spent the last four hours at this mini game, and positives only, we have 13 gambles stacked up. Good luck us, here we go. Dang, no elites, no pet, but gamble count is up to 394 now. It's getting up there. Once again, I might as well start using up these totems that I've gotten through Barrage Slayer whenever I have an elite and hard clue slot open. Here's to 32 KC, which is basically half of the drop rate. Skatizo pet is a one in 65, so the mess don't quite add up perfectly, but hey, let's just round up and call it a day. Haha, <laughs> no pet, but another elite. This is going to be our third one stacked. So masters, here I come. Knocked out those clues quick. Three caskets stacked. Y'all know the drill. Let's get opening. 149 KC. Oh, with a call log slot. Okay. The big 150 master clue KC. And 151. All average loot and no pet today. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know what time it is. Stats time, baby. Go fill up that water real quick because this lesson is a heater. In this episode, I was lucky enough to obtain two pets. Starting off with Jad, we obtained this pet on 5KC and 4 Cape Gambles. With a pet rate of 1 in 67 plus Cape Gambles, we were in the 7th percentile of players to get this pet early. 
Now let's picture this in the real world. If I gathered together the nearly 4 million people that reside in Los Angeles, and I forced them to kill Jad and do their cape gambles until pet, only 7% or 280,000 people of LA's whole population would have gotten the pet at my KC or earlier. This 7% is proportional to the population size of Toledo, Ohio. What I'm telling you is I'm the Toledo, Ohio comparison of Los Angeles, California sample size. Okay, okay, let's get back on track. In episode six, we also obtained Noon, the grotesque guardian pet on 578 KC. We are in the 18th percentile of players to obtain this pet. Noon is also the second longest Slayer pet only behind Hydra, which makes this luck even sweeter. With Noon being a 1 in 3k pet rate and 37 kills per hour average, it comes out to be roughly 81 hours to hit the pet rate here. Getting as lucky as I did, I ended up saving 66 hours on the Noon pet. For Jad, it's only roughly 28 hours to hit the pet rate on task, and after getting it on 5kc, I managed to save 26 hours. In this episode alone, I'm a net positive 92 hours saved, and overall we're currently 225 hours lucky on all the pets we currently have. We've officially passed 9 days lucky of in-game playtime. Surely throughout this account, we're going to start hitting some dry streaks, so I'm honestly really happy that we're building up this luck early. It's been 4 months and 8 days since our account creation, and I know I say this every time, but we are just not letting off the gas pedal when it comes to progress. Our account is up to 41 days in-game playtime, and our bank value has just surpassed 3 billion GP. In this episode alone, we've done over 100 high gambles, putting us at 400 gamble count for the Penance Queen pet, quickly approaching half the drop rate. We've officially begun Slayer pet hunts, and we managed to pull two Slayer pets, Grotesque Guardians and Jad. Still trucking away steadily at clues, we've recently hit 150 master clue count. Finally, we obtained a new rank in BA, and we can now attack in leeches. Closing everything out, we are now at double digit pets, guys. 10 out of 52 of the total pets currently in the game.